Okay. So today we're looking at applications of the unit circle. So we're going to be using in particular, let's have a look up here. These are the things we derived on Friday. So we derived a number of descriptions of the unit circle. The x coordinate for any point on the outside of the circle is given by cos of theta, the y coordinate sine of theta. We've got this understanding of what tan theta is equal to, it's sine divided by cos. And then we've got the Pythagorean identity, the last one, which is the one we're going to use a fair bit today. So let's get straight into it. Find cos theta given sine theta is root 3 on 2. So let's do this one first just by using our unit circle. So you guys filled one in, but I also provided you with one right at the back. So let's skip to that one. Now, to solve this, we're going sine theta. Sine theta is y. So I'm looking for when the y value is root 3 divided by 2. All right, and you can put that in your calculator and convert it to a decimal. It's about 0 0.86, okay? And so we're saying, what's the cosine value that corresponds with it? So I'm just going to sketch the circle. Now, root 3 on 2 is about 0.86. So here the y value is 1, here the y value is 0. So it's going to be like here, right? Here the y value is 0 0.86. And we're saying, what are the x values that correspond with that point? And so they're going to be here and here. So if you look at those locations on the unit circle, you can see the sets of coordinates. And we've got some x coordinate and we've got the y coordinate of root 3 on 2. That's the one we're interested in. So what's the corresponding x value? Half. Okay. Over here, the x value is minus half. So there's two solutions for cos theta given sine theta is root 3 on 2. So we can just say cos theta equals plus or minus half. Okay, that's it for the first one. Okay, let's move on to the next one. We've got cos theta is a third. So we're going to look at our unit circle. And cos is the x values. So we're going, when are the x values a third? One on three. So here's the x value. Here the x value is one. So have a look up here. Familiarize yourself with you. Here the x value is one. Here the x value is zero. So a third is like here. All right. But when we look up here at these points on the unit circle, we can see we don't have any coordinates that have a third listed in them, okay? For the unit circle, we've only got multiples of 30 degrees and 45 degrees. So this one doesn't correspond with the unit circle. So it's not one that we can look at the unit circle and get the answer from. This one, we need to apply the Pythagorean identity. So first, I'm just gonna write it up. We've got sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals one. We've got cos theta is a third. So I'm going to take this third and I'm going to put it where the cos theta is. All right. So I'm going to have sine squared theta plus a third squared. All right, because cos theta is a third. Okay, and then we're just going to follow this through. Remember, cos squared theta, that means the same as cos of theta in brackets squared. This is the correct notation. So let's let's do this one. Now, when we're, when we're squaring a fraction, or whenever we have a fraction to a power, the power goes both to the numerator and the denominator. So this is plus one on nine is equal to one. Okay, we, what are we trying to do? We're trying to solve for sine theta. We want to get sine by itself. So we'll isolate sine squared theta by subtracting 1 on 9 from both sides. This is a linear equation. And this is our variable, right? We're trying to get x by itself. We're trying to get sine squared theta by itself. So we're going to subtract 1 on 9 from both sides. Okay, we have 1, take away 1 on 9. All right. 
that. So, I mean, you can put that kind of thing in your calculator, right? But we need them to have the same denominator. So that's nine on nine. Nine divided by nine is equal to one. Nine on nine, take one on nine, is eight on top of nine. So we've got sine squared theta is eight on nine. How do we get sine theta by itself? Square root of both sides. All right. So the square root of the whole thing, eight on top of nine. Now you're getting full marks here, okay? I'm gonna give you full marks there. Um, if you put that in your calculator, it will simplify it a little bit, okay? You would write it as the square root of eight on top of three. All right? Um, which would even convert to two root two on top of three. Okay, so there are different ways of writing roots, and I'm gonna say these are all the same, and you can check by converting them to decimals. And that's one of the things where people get tripped up in the trig unit is because there's multiple ways of writing the same thing. We're not concerned with the manner in which you write it, just that you've got the correct answer. Okay, so either of these, any of those will be satisfactory. And putting that in your calculator, it'll probably jump straight to this and probably pick that out. Now, um, so I've said full marks there. One more thing is when we, when we perform the square root, plus or minus, okay? Because we have, if we think back, back to our unit circle here, what are we saying? We're saying, given the x value is a third, what's the y value of this point? We've got the x value is a third, what's the possible y value? Well, we have a positive y value and we have a negative y value. So that's what that solution means, okay? We have a positive y value and a negative y value. That's why we have the plus or minus, okay? Okay, next one. We've got, find the exact value of cos theta, given sine theta is two on five, and pi on two is less than theta, which is less than pi, okay? So let's apply the same process. We've got find cos theta, so this is number three, given sine theta is two on five. Okay, so the Pythagorean identity, that's it. We're asked to find cos theta. So we're gonna put this sine theta, this two on five, where the sine is. All right, so I've got two on five squared plus cos squared theta. Okay, two on five squared, squares the top, squares the bottom. It's four on top of five, 25, plus cos squared theta equals one. Cos squared theta is our variable. We're trying to get cos theta by itself. So we'll subtract four on 25 from both sides. Okay, one take four on 25. We need to express that as a fraction with a denominator of 25, right? It's equal to 25 on 25. Okay, four on 25. Now look, these, these fraction operations that I'm performing, you're not, you don't need to show that. You can just go straight to the answer. I'm just trying to draw it out because fractions is a skill that people typically struggle with. 25 take four is 21. Okay, so whenever you're adding and subtracting fractions, it's just the top take the top or the top plus the top. Okay, we've got cos squared theta by itself. We're going to square root both sides. All right, so that's going to give us cos theta equals plus or minus the square root of 21 on 25. All right, so this is positive root 21 on 5 or negative root 21 on 5. All right, if you perform, if you put it in your calculator, this is what it's going to pop out like, right? The square root of the denominator. Now, okay, so that's fine. I'm going to accept here or here. There's one more thing we need to consider. This, this one over here, that was worth two marks. Over here, this is worth three marks because there's one more constraint it wants you to consider. Let's read the question. Find the exact value of cos theta given sine theta is two on five and there is a constraint for the angle. It's saying the angle lies between pi on two and pi. Pi on two is less than theta, which is less than pi. So let's consider our unit circle. 
Here's pi on 2. Here's pi. It's speaking specifically about this region. It's saying the solution is in this region. So because the solution is in this region, and we have found a cosine value, we found an x value. Remember, cos is x. Cos is x. And what can we say about the x values in this region? The x values in this region are negative. All of the x values to the left of 0 are going to be negative. This region has negative x values. So that means we reject the positive solution. Reject it because it's not in the domain. It's not in the domain that we're interested in. Reject it because, and then we can reference pi on 2, less than theta, less than pi. Okay? This is the x value that is negative. So that's going to be our correct solution. All right, Austin? Yeah, that's good. Okay, excellent. Let's move on. So we've got A, B, uh, very good. On to C. Okay. <clears throat> now this one says, find tan theta given cos theta is a quarter and we've got a, a constraint. Now, what you could do is go through the Pythagorean identity. You've got cos theta, right? You could go through and find sine theta. And then tan is sine divided by cos. So you could do that, all right? It's going to be a fairly long process. I'm going to show you an alternative process that you can use to solve these problems. OK, so we want to find tan theta. And we've got cos theta is a quarter. All right, let's remember the three trig ratio, sine, cos, tan. So, ka, to. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw any right angle triangle. It doesn't matter what it looks like, right? I'm just going to draw a right angle triangle. Here it is. And it doesn't matter what the size of the angle is. It doesn't matter, um, you know, the orientation of this right angle triangle. But we have cos theta is a quarter. And remember, cos theta is equal to A on H. Alright? We get that from the trig ratios here. Sine theta is O on H, cos theta, A on H, tan theta, O on H. Cos theta is A on H, which means my 1 on 4 it corresponds with A on H. Okay? So if I label this triangle right, here's my hypotenuse. Here's my adjacent side, connecting the angle and the theta. Uh, and here is my opposite side, opposite the angle. And I've got cos theta is A on H. A corresponds with 1, so the length of this side is 1. H corresponds with 4, so the length of this side corresponds with 4. I want tan theta. I'm asked to find tan theta. Well, tan theta is O on top of A, right? I've got A. A is 1. I need to find O. But look at this triangle. It's a right angle triangle. We've got 4, we've got 1, and we've got this unknown. Okay, and now it becomes Pythag, right? It's just, that's where we get this idea of the Pythagorean identity from. So, because it's a right angle triangle, we're going to have 1 squared plus O squared equals 4 squared. Alright, so we've got 1 plus O. Alright, so I've just gone through there, mash that quite quickly. I'll pause for a sec. So, just a quick description again. What did we do? We've just drawn any right angle triangle and labelled it. Okay? 
We've said, I've given cos theta, cos theta is A on H. So I've said, what corresponds with A, what corresponds with H? I'm trying to find tan theta, which means I need O. Here's, here's the right angle triangle we've got. We've got that, we've got that, and we're just using Pythagoras theorem to calculate O. Now I put plus or minus here because we need to consider which direction it's going in on the unit circle. A triangle can't ever have a negative dimension, but here we're considering the direction, which is why we include the plus or minus. Okay, we've got O. We've got O, right? So then tan theta is O on A, and we've got O is plus or minus the square root of 15, and A is 1. So we're ready to answer it. Tan theta is plus root 15, so root 15, or minus root 15, because it's on top of 1, we don't need to write the denominator of 1. Alright, so, so we've gone through, we've solved for tan, but we still have a constraint. Alright. Now, the constraint is from 0 to pi on 2. It's talking about this region. Now, this might be a good time for me to tell you our little acronym for the unit circle. Okay? Firstly, we've got the four quadrants, right? Quadrant 1, 2, 3, 4. Right? It's broken up into quarters. Now, in the first quadrant, both sine and cos are positive. Alright? The x values are positive and the y values are positive in this region. Alright? Therefore, if tan is sine divided by cos, and you have a positive divided by a positive, tan is positive as well. In fact, all of the trig ratios are positive in the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, only sine is positive, both cos and tan are negative. In the third quadrant, everything's negative, so sine is negative, cos is negative, but that means if we have tan is sine divided by cos, and negative divided by a negative, tan is positive in that region, and in the last region over here we have positive x but negative y values, so only cos is positive. Now, you don't need to understand how I've developed the ASPC, but this is something you can remember, all right? All students talk cool, all right? So all students talk cool, and that's going to tell you in the first quadrant, all the trig ratios are positive. In the second quadrant, only sine is positive. In the third quadrant, only tan is positive. And in the last quadrant, only cos is positive. So let's consider the region we're restricted to. We're restricted to this region in which all the ratios are positive, which means we reject the negative solution. Okay? Reject it because pi 0 is less than theta is less than pi on 2. Reject it because it's out, the negative solution is outside of the domain, right? Okay, one more. So we have find sine theta and cos theta given tan theta is 5. So we've got tan theta is 5. Alright, so in this process we are going to have to use the, um, uh, the triangle process I showed you before. So remember tan, tan is O on top of A, right? So 5 is equal to O on top of A. So we can see O is sort of corresponding with 5. What's A? What's underneath it? 1. Okay, tan is O and A. Now I've said draw any right angle triangle. Okay, so here's theta, here's the right angle. Let's label it H, A, O. Tan is equal to O on top of A. O on top of A. 
All right, we, if we want to find sine theta, sine theta is O on H, cos theta is A on H, we need H. We need to find this hypotenuse, and so we're going to use Pythagoras' theorem again. We have 1 squared plus 5 squared equals H squared. Alright, so we found H, okay, and then I've said, what are we trying to find? We're trying to find sine theta. Sine theta is O on H. Alright, so O divided by H is the 5 on top of square root of 26, plus or minus, okay, because we're told tan theta is positive 5. So where is tan positive? Tan is positive in this region and this region, all right? And in this region, both sine and cos are positive, but in this region, both sine and cos are negative. So that means we need to include both solutions. That's why we have the plus and minus, because we don't have a restricted domain on this occasion, okay? So I've shown you a number of processes, right? You can use the Pythagorean identity, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is one. That's what it'll start like. Or if you like, you can draw these right angle triangles and just apply Pythag theorem and re-familiarise re yourself with the trig identities. Okay, the exercise will start fairly easy, um, like we did with our first one, you know, sort of looking at the unit circle, using it, but then it's going to get into some more abstract ones that do require that algebra that we've gone through. All right, that's all we're doing for today's lesson. I'm going to float around. Um, hopefully we're feeling pretty all right about it.